I think we're dealing with a, sub a subject where everybody is getting subjective. And how can you be judgmental of people? No, none of us are perfect. The point is that these folks have a kid. This kid is obviously loved. Every family's got its craziness. Every family's got somebody that makes somebody else feel bad in some way. We all grow up with it. We all know we, there's somebody in our family we want to do this to. What makes these people any different? How can we judge them? They have a kid. They love their kid. I would like to know, in a normal man-wife relationship, it, there's a time of growth together before you get married, before you decide to have a, ch a child. How long have you know, had you known each other? What basis did you just suddenly say, oh, I like his eyes, I think I want to have a kid with that color of eyes? Or, or how did you go about determining? Well, you hear my story when I decided? Briefly, please. Okay, um, <laughs> she has a little puppy, and I was talking to her on the phone. We communicate on the phone every once in a while. And uh, I heard um, her reprimanding her puppy for knocking over something. And she did it so gently. That was then when I realized that uh, that's when I knew that she would make a wonderful mother because she was so... She was so open and so kind and gentle with this puppy that uh, I recognized at that point that she Do you was... know that the lifespan of a dog is a lot different than the lifespan of a oh, child? Of Do you know? I mean, of you course. go... <laughs> You're kidding! I didn't know that! <laughs> Six years, you know? Oh, my God. Excuse the voice. Lost it. Okay, you were married, they say, uh, before this took place, the relationship between the two of you. Why didn't you consider having a baby then? Oh, my God, if you'd known my husband. I mean, he was a dear, but you could never have raised a child with him. I mean, you know, he was, he was a kid himself. I had an adult child and, uh, when I was married to a man, and there was no way I was going to have a child with him. Uh, the thing I don't quite understand is nobody asks me what I do in my bedroom with my husband every night. Uh, so why does it make any difference what you do and who you do it with? I know, that's what I think, you know. I don't think it's anybody's business what I do in my bedroom. I don't intend to judge you, but since there is a child, I believe that uh, a religious upbringing is important for a child. What do you intend to do for your child and kind of how would you justify, you know, your arrangement? Well, Compared I personally to the Bible. think that religion is a very, very personal thing. It's a matter of morals and value. And uh, personally, I'm not uh, affiliated with any particular religion. So I thought if we can just teach him to be good and strong and moral in the way that uh, goodness dictates, um, that's, I think that's religion to me. And I'd like to ask you something. Uh, if you can't procreate and everything that you do goes against the laws of nature and there is some naturalness in having a child, but you, in order to do that you had to be totally female, you had to be a woman, you couldn't be, you couldn't have done it any other way but with a man's sperm, the only way in nature. And so you had to come from a heterosexual type of sexuality. So how do you justify any naturalness in this relationship well, with this it child? Well, wasn't, it wasn't heterosexual. We didn't have... You know, as far as I'm concerned, it's the union of the sperm and the egg, and that is a very, I mean, those are two gametes, and those are, that's a very uh, complicated chemical process, and that's what it was about. Yeah. Uh, from the viewpoint of the child, I know that children hate to be different when they're growing up. I know adopted children who <laughs> had monumental problems, even though they were loved very much by their adopted parents. I can give you one small example of my own. Uh, when I was in grammar school, I had a stepmother who used to keep me in black and brown stockings when all the other children wore white and beige stockings. This made me feel terrible. So your point is that Gardner will likewise feel... Yes, he will. But you know who makes Gardner feel terrible are people like you. See, I don't make... I'm not the one that is prejudiced. I'm not the one that's making Gardner feel like he's being raised in a different household. But it's his people peer, like you that are making him feel different. His peer group will make him feel different. That's because their parents teach them that it's wrong, instead of teaching them that everybody are human beings and everybody deserves love. In, in also, uh, well, she, in other words, the parents of the children who made fun of you because of the stockings you wore were promoting a value that that, that's not important. It was an unnecessary kind of pain that was inflicted on you. The children had, the parents had nothing to do with it in that case. They didn't go to teaching their children, don't, uh, don't like you anyone don't who so? wears black and brown stuff. Where did they get that notion? Yeah, where did the kids they get just, it? 
they feel uncomfortable with a difference when they see so That's many because different. your parents teach them to be uncomfortable with differences my, my son's not uncomfortable with us at all i mean he's been around gay people since he's three years old and um and he's around heterosexual people and it, it's you know there's no difference as far as he's concerned he doesn't see the prejudice i, I just wondered since uh both of you are gay and you, and you didn't want to get married if either of you tried to adopt a child before uh, you decided to do this. It's not quite the same, of course. If you can have your own child, of course, that's much more attractive. And My major problem with this is um, you mentioned the divorce rate, but you're going into this as two separate people in two separate households. And I, I just feel I came from a divorced household. And I just think that's really hard on a kid and to start from even that age and just bring them up in two separate households. Two you know? separate, loving, encouraging households, not two uh, fighting households, you see. Y yes, ma'am. You want to stand? Well, not, not violence, but uh, static. I just want to go back to what the lady said before uh, about prejudice, and I sincerely believe it does come from the parent, and they bring it down to the child, and the child goes out of the home, and downs her, the other children. It's the parents, in my opinion, who cause most of the prejudice in the world today by just making their children do those kind of things. Yeah, kids don't think that stuff up as <clears> well. <throat> also, we're not going around with signs on our uh, sweatshirts to say, I am gay. I am a gay father. I am a gay mother. We uh, live our lives um, trying to be uh, just natural, normal, loving people. Uh, I'm, I don't think that being gay is something, personally, I don't think it's something to be proud of. It's like having five fingers on my hand. It's just, that's the way I am. Um, why did the three of you bother getting married if you were, if you're gay? Why did we not? Oh. The two on the right? Yeah. You have to remember that, I mean, we all, I, we don't come from another planet. We know the prejudices here. We grew up in the same society as you did. Um, and you know the attitude, traditionally, what it has been toward gay people. And we grew up with that pre pressure. Uh, we, most of us grew up thinking we were the only one in the world that felt that way and everybody wants to sort of be like everybody else and you're told, you know, you have to get married and have children and so forth and so on and if you think you're the only one, um, you, can't, you can't imagine existing on your own with those feelings. You want to relate to people and so you want to fit in. You get married uh, in many cases and you have children and at some point um, if you're lucky, you accept the fact that you're gay. You overcome the prejudice. Yeah. But when we grew up, there was nothing to say there were gay people out there and that they were okay. We thought we were the only one, and all we heard was the nasty, prejudicial remarks. We grew up with them the same as you did, and, yeah. but it affected us in a different way. How old are you, Michael? 38. 38. How about you, Robert? 36. Right, so uh, it is a fact that the easier we make it for people to be gay, the less likely it is that they'll marry your daughter. <laughs> I mean, that's... You know, uh, how you doing, my man? The problem, the, pro the problem with that kind of flippancy is that it, it, it implies a certain prejudice about uh, gays, which I don't mean to do. It, it, but we, I do think it's important to, to note that to find out you're gay must be a terrible blow if you're 17 or 16 or whenever it happens in a society that that doesn't like you and in which you feel strange so the temptation to look straight must be enormous well you don't want to get fired from your job you have to survive in this world and if you don't have the emotional strength built up yet about being gay then you're going to do what you have to to protect yourself and a lot of uh, many gays marry thinking that that that'll it'll work out i mean i don't think well even a lot of psychiatrists traditionally said well you you know you get married and, and uh you know and you have children and that and it'll all go away and so you have professionals telling you this kind of thing which is a lot of baloney it's not a pain. and we can only speculate on the pain this must be for both spouses not necessarily any less for the woman who discovers that she's married to a homosexual male right keep up the prejudice and then you'll keep up gays getting married and having marriages break up down the line forever. If you aren't going to change the attitudes and bring out the truth, then people are going to keep getting married and divorced and, and all the rest of it. It's never going to end. And we'll be back in just a moment.